In this video, I'm going to show you how you can train a Stardust model for nuclei segmentation. So uh, you can uh, install a uh, Stardust plugin. So maybe, uh, and, and that comes with Fiji, that comes with pre-trained models. So maybe we can start by just looking at the kind of results we can get. So if we go back to this image, uh, so one of the images we want to segment, if we use the regular uh, Stardust plugins, so if I go to Stardust, Stardust 2D, it's, so you can use the versatile fluorescent nuclei, which is good, really good for uh, fluorescence images. Um, so you shouldn't change that um, the way it's normalized. And then you can change, so the overlap, I'm going to take a small overlapping and special because I don't want my um, nuclei to overlap. I want to segment them um, on a pixel to pixel uh, basis, I would say. Um, and I can have a probability that is pretty low to try to segment um, as many uh, nuclei as possible. I'm going to extract uh, raw image, label image, or both just raw image, so we can actually look at the results uh, in this image. And I can run it. And when I do that, we can extract uh, so the segmentation, segmented nuclei. And so it's now, it's just that the raw image is there. So if I this, can look at the results. When we look at the results, we see that, you know, in the stroma, it's definitely not that bad, especially so in that region, it works pretty well. When the signal is not really high, we miss. And when we have this uh, kind of, you know, like that's that's true, it's not, um, oops, sorry. So I want to, okay, it's because I'm not in the image. Yeah, so I'm going to. So, so here it's, it, it really doesn't make a good job, and that's true that the signal is not that good, but still this doesn't make any sense. And if we look at um, the epithelial cells, it tends to under-segment and to group them together to have some, you know, some nuclei that have a roundish shape, and it doesn't really manage to extract the actual epithelial uh, morphology when it's like this, it just fails to get them. So maybe with a different threshold that would work better here in, in, a, in epithelial region, again, it fails completely. So basic, so to summarize, segmentation in the stroma is pretty good, but in the epithelium is not that good. So maybe we can try to retrain Stardust model to get better results. That's what we're going to try to achieve. We we'll see if we can imp improve that. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to open Stardust. Uh, and we're going to do training in 2D. It works like before. So we have all the code here. Then so I'm going to do two different trainings. Um, so I'm not going to play with the learning rate. I know that this one worked pretty good. But here, as you can see, we can do a transfer learning. Okay? And the transfer learning is actually based on uh, the model I just showed you, the pre-trained model uh, with uh, so versatile fluorescence. So we're going to try without uh, a transfer learning and with transfer learning. So the training directory, it's polynuclei only. These are the same uh, folders that we, that we use with UNEC to do the voice segmentation, so validation. And uh, when I put it in models, so without transfer learning, we have one channel, which is just the data. We're going to uh, do a learning rate at this value, and let's uh, say just 200 epochs. So you can choose to do that augmentation or not. We're going to do it because, you know, I mean, so in that case, it's a bit different. It's not coded the same way than with the unit. It's going to apply randomly that augmentation to the images. And it will always help to have some data augmentation at least. So I would really suggest to, to add that augmentation. Here, 
uh, batch size. We're going to keep it small so it run uh, any computer. We could, uh, if you have a GPU with a little of memory, you can increase that. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to so do the same thing, polynuclear train, polynuclear invitation, right? Uh, and the same, and this time we're going to do transfer learning. So again, to the efforts. And now we can uh, train the two models. So uh, I'm going to just launch the training and I'm going to speed up video so you don't have to wait for the entire training time. All right, it's done. So let's have a look at uh, the last groups. So uh, as you can see here, so we have the uh, Four curves. So the first one, orange and blue, correspond uh, to the results we got. So, sorry, uh, blue and, and, and red. So it's <coughs> without transfer learning. And uh, magenta and green is uh, with transfer learning. So here we have different lots. Uh, as it's, uh, it's not semantic segmentation, but instant segmentation, then accuracy is much more difficult to define. And actually, we don't have a, a curve for accuracy. Uh, so we're going to have a look at the loss. And so we have different uh, different loss. And uh, when we look at the loss, that's the global loss. So that's probably uh, the easiest way to go. And interestingly, when we look at this, we see, not surprisingly, that it converged much faster with transfer learning, which, it, which makes sense because with transfer learning, we already have, uh, with this model, we already have uh, interesting results. We saw that when we segmented the image with the model that is available in, in Fiji. Uh, and then it seems that we reached some kind of plateau pretty quickly, but it's still decreasing. So maybe we could still improve. Um, it's still decreasing without transfer learning. Uh, so probably to have more epochs would help. Uh, and a good clue about that is to look at the learning rate. Uh, the learning rate is, uh, so was initiated at E minus four. Uh, uh, it, it gonna, it's gonna go down uh, if we have a loss which doesn't decrease anymore. And as we can see here, it never uh, decreased. So if you have a learning rate that doesn't decrease, that's a good sign that you should uh, increase the number of epochs. So just uh, as, as here, uh, the, main, I, the main goal is to show you how to use these codes. I'm not going to redo uh, the training with more epochs, but clearly here it would, uh, it would help and it would lead to better results. 